Hello and welcome to another video on how to become a business consulting freelancer. So in this last section, okay, after I went to how to conduct a, a research and gather quality data, so I identify what, what is data, what are the benefits, the trade-off, as well as an overview of how to conduct a research. So then I saw how Paul Mendes, the Zero to Mastery Structure, made a research, particularly a marketing research, on a tourist website where these guidelines outline things like first, understand the basic, understand what they offer and what they are the products and service. Okay, and then go into the specifics to understand all their pricing, category. A company review if you can have access to their first party data and that's great because you can see what they have done in the past how they have been performing and you can provide your suggestion much more better you usually have to sign an Indian agreement on that and then you're going to look at the competitor or you're going to make a competitor analysis to understand who the other industry or who the other players in that industry are to look at what they're doing what you can learn from them and make a keyword research based on this competitor analysis so you can use tools like keyword research tool from google or any other company to understand What's going on in that industry? And from there, you on top of that, you now get up-to-date data to get news from different sources. And ask yourself, so everything that I have researched, what is most likely to work today? And that includes how this industry is adapting to regulation and where this industry is going. So the TLDR of this is first analyze that particular company understand all the products and service, and then go into the specific about the category, the company's review, and if you can have access to the first party data, that's great. If you can, well, go to the competitor analysis to understand the other players in that industry. So what are the other players in that industry? Uh, yeah, and yeah, what players in that industry are, and so you can see what you can learn from them, what they're doing, create keyword research based on this competitor analysis, use tools like keyword research tool from Google or any other company to understand now what's going on in that industry, okay? And then you get to up then you do the research to get up to date data so data from the worst news uh, and so on to see well everything that you have researched what is most likely to work today so the tldr of this is look at that particular company okay understand all of their proposals and prices good and service they offer in a company review and then if you can have access to the first party data great if you're not well you zoom out to now look at the other players in that industry to see what they're doing how they're doing and what you can learn from that by doing a keyword research based on that you can now uh, using keyword research tools out there uh, to understand what's going on in that industry and from there getting up to date data from worst news uh, different media outlets to understand what's going on uh, what's going on in that industry where this industry is going and how this industry is adapting to regulations and i think this Zoom in and zoom out, especially when you're going to conduct a research, is something great and powerful. Uh, because this particular guidelines 
can help you vastly when you're analyzing uh, companies, for example. Okay, that's that's cool. That's cool. So, with all of that, okay, uh, then I conduct uh, particularly this, uh, I conduct a research particularly on the e-commerce to understand what an e-commerce, what, what is an e-commerce after all, from source like Amazon or Shopify, and then understand is the type of e-commerce or the actors involved in this dynamic the government, the business, and the consumers, and how they relate each other. So business to consumers, the most commonly uh, examples are retailers, subscription service, ordering food and delivery service, online travel and booking, digital marketplace uh, for business to business, online marketplace, EDI, electronic data interchange, permit and license applications for servers, for building permits or food license, wholesale e-commerce, online portals, and business-to-business -business payment solutions, then I look at the, the consumers to business, such as freelance work, sur online survey, crowdfunding, uh, and the yeah, crowdfunding, uh, user generated content, reverse option. The government to business, such as public procuremental portals, tax filling and payment systems, business registrations, international trade and export declaration, mm, uh, permit and licensing, Okay, that the government issued to business and the government to consumers, such as online portals so, so citizens can pay their taxes for any of the payment options that the government provide. For example, the IRS in the US or the UK HM Customer Revenue. Uh, so yeah, you have this uh, online portals, payment of fines and fees, uh, the vehicle licensing and registration, passport applications, uh, utility bill, payment of utility bills, ordering birth and death certificates. And when it comes to the consumer to business, well, such as online petitions, online donations, permit and, li and licensing, such as fishing licensing or uh, hunt permit hunt hunting permits, the payment of fines and fees. So once I look at how the how this entity relate each other, and now I'm able to articulate that right, which is great, then. Uh, well, what I did, okay, yeah, so what I did, mm-hmm. Is well, conduct is this keyword research, okay, uh, to understand who. So, the competitor analysis first, 
to understand who the other players are in that industry, who the other players in that industry are. Amazon, Costco, Shopify, eBay, Alibaba, and then a, a keyword research to understand what's going on in that industry, right? So most of the times our website or web, website themes for Shopify or PO sale or point of sale, POS, uh, so you get the idea. So once I conduct that research, and this is important, especially if you're gonna do that for a client, well, now create a visually engaging report that show the client how you came with that conclusion. And from there is that by showing them with chart and different aesthetics and statistics, the meaningful pattern, you can then reach an agreement with a client and say, ultimately, yes, this is what we like to do. Um, you seal the deal and you close the deal. So how you can do that from a broad perspective is first, Analyze the data that you're going to put in your report. So before creating a report, you must know exactly what's going on and what you're going to put in that report. Uh, second is put the most relevant data in your report because you don't want the client start to forget what the important thing uh, was. So by showing the meaningful data, and then expand that with different aesthetics and charts, which is one way to do that. If you have recurring clients, create templates to speed up your uh, report development, like your report process, as well as uh, themes, all right? Uh, as well as themes, that mm -hmm. so um, as well as things that by using is different charts and that and different aesthetics okay so using charts and graph to make your presentation stand up and because visualization helps not only you, but also the clients to make more well-informed decisions. So the couple chart that you can do is you have bar graph where you want to show change in times or compare different categories. Part chart, where you want to make comparison part to a whole with continuous or discrete data. Great for a small data set because otherwise it becomes unreadable pretty easy. Line graph, when you want to show time series relationships, uh, whether it's volatility, uh, acceleration, decelerations, or trending. The other is area charge, which is the same as line graph, but with volumes, you can represent here another variable a scatter plot when you want to make correlations among different data. Again, correlation doesn't mean causality, but that's a whole new video. Such as, for example, the time, time to respond on the X axis versus customer satisfaction. I was going to put this way. All right. So, there is more customer satisfaction uh, that you know, the customer are more satisfied when the customer service or customer support uh, responding quickly and solve their inquiries or problems. Okay. The other is bubble charge. And here you can make use of them for ranking comparisons or nominal data data that doesn't have an inherent order such as gender, color, cards, 
your fruits, ethnicity. So for example, you can use a bubble chart to illustrate is time spent on the internet, age per gender in each of those bubbles. Okay. Also, I look at something called the heat maps. What it does is to show categorical data, data that can be grouped in different groups or classes, whether it is um, nominal data, something that I explained before, and ordinal data, data that has an inherited order, so, such as job seniority, entry level, junior, senior, or mid-level, senior, C executive, product ratings like uh, one to five stars, health status, or poor or fair, good, uh, very good or excellent, uh, job or uh, education level. So you have high school diploma or an associate diploma, a degree, a master degree or a PhD. So data heap after all, they show is this data, okay? Um, yeah, so data heap after all, they show you this data, categorical data, using intensity of color that can represent it in maps or a data table. So for example, when you want to know is, or there are, uh, what you want to know is the fruit exported by company. Okay. Grape, or you want to know is how apples, uh, a, how apples per state has been exported. All right, and you can use the intensity of color for that. Also, uh, I saw is the uh, tables when you want to make comparison to representative cells or a uh, part as a whole. In this case, is the So for this table is when you want to know where block view are coming from, okay? Waterfall, when you want to see, when you want to see performance or time, geomaps, when you want for see distribution on a map, for example, how many retails a particular brand has per city or per state. And the pictogram so show statistic using icons such as from the clean cleanwater.org they show you that well yeah they show you that um Okay, so for that they show you is uh, one or nine people on earth don't have access to clean, fresh water. Okay, so.
So, with that, okay, now, Okay. Then, okay, after I describe all of the charts that you can use, uh, it's important also to mention is the tools and resources that we can use to leverage, such as Microsoft Excel, Canvas for generate reports, Statista for consume uh, data or use them as source, uh, Google Trends, among others. So that's great because then I look at the do's and don'ts of data visualization, meaning the show structure, show data in a structured way, make it readable and compare to benchmark. So compare data to benchmark and the don is that after you present the data don't lose it uh, show or uh, showing data without precise numbers okay so avoid that kind of thing so then i look at the consultation tips especially when you want to uh, talk about your report which is uh, Break down things, okay. Break down things, make it uh, easy. Yeah, so break down things. Okay, I'm gonna make a quick pause here. Give me a second. All right. Yeah, uh, M. So this is now the consultation cell. This is now the consultation. In the communications for communication tips for consulting, right? So once you conduct the research, you make the report. Okay. Now it is time to present that. And there's some communication tip that will help me in that regard. So meaning that break down complex topics. So especially if you're going to use industry jargons and things like that, or you're going to talk for an audience that doesn't have a background of what you're going to present, well, make things simple and break down things to make it easy to digest for them. Uh, make sure that you understand the goal is <laughs> important, okay? Uh, and avoid any miscommunications. Especially when you're going to present now the your consultation findings. Uh, recognize that these particular companies or the particular client have different communication habit or work habits. So identify them, perhaps they want to just to contact through emails or they want to do this video calls, okay? So keep track every communication that you have with them using CRM, uh, be a team player, send brief updates for that, again, Consultation uh, tips to improve your communication. So then I look at the A-B testing for consulting, especially this is a great way to have 
or in bill your recurring clients okay a great way to help you build your recurring clients so you have is the control so this a b testing is about you have the control the ape or the unaltered version or the original and let's say your landing page and then the treatment or the expected optimized example expected optimized version so you make a minor change on your landing page you want to evaluate the impact that it has okay so you can perform any test that you want all right like this so you can perform any ten any test as you want however there are several best practice to go along with this this is one make one test at a time okay so you want to know which aspect when you do this a b testing drive the more retention or conversion here so do one test at a time so for example making a minor change in the landing page whether it's changing the color of your header or the typography okay so but do one test at a time you can see the you can see the impact that you have so doing one test at a time, test one variable. Again, if you want to evaluate how effective uh, an element is, for example, in a landing page or uh, help you in an email campaign uh, for retention and conversions, you want to test one variable at a time. So you can pinpoint what exactly caused that change. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm, interest, interest. Mm -hmm. so okay so one test at a time test one variable you want to see how effective an element uh, for example in your landing page or a or help an email campaign for user retention and conversions you want to test one variable and it's funny because at the end of the day they are measuring is this so user retention and conversion uh, how willing are they to pay for that in that regard mm -hmm. so one test at a time because you want to make things much more simple okay for your life and for testing this a b testing okay so you can make a minor change. This is also can be applied to your life. Okay, so making minor change when doing this A-B testing. Okay, most of the time a lot of people apply that, but this for the business. But what if you apply that for your life for a certain aspect okay, of this A-B testing? Okay, which you have the original versions, uh, the unaltered versions, and the treatment, the expected optimized version mm, okay interesting maybe testing for that so there's a couple best practice here like test one variable at a time do that do one test at a time test one variable okay because you want to know uh, evaluate the impact that a particular element has let's say in a landing page or in an email campaign whether it is uh, things like a particular paragraph 
or adding a new paragraph in your email campaign or an image or a GIF, okay? Uh, how much of that can generate user retention and potentially conversion, okay? Uh, and they make minor change as well as split your test randomly 50 50 percent okay so you can get much more conclusive result uh test simultaneously so don't make this so don't defer this kind of test so do this uh, from monday to tuesday and then do that uh, later on no test this simultaneously this original version um uh, the expect or the, the expected desired output okay so the expected optimized version the expected optimized version that do test simultaneously and then decide on significance before testing right also when you're going to do this measuring or this a b testing okay so after you know what an a b testing can help you okay it can help you to build more recurring clients okay but also it can help you to in your personal life this a b testing okay uh and by following because after all you have the original version and your expected desire of the expected optimized version the a and b okay uh and there's some even though that you can do as much tasks as you want uh for humans <laughs> okay it's better to follow this best practice, which is do one test at a time, test one variable, because you wanna know is the impact on an element, perhaps on a landing page or an email campaign, how much of them drive user retention and conversion, okay? And Yeah, yeah. How much of them drive that kind of thing? Uh, mm -hmm. How much of them drive that kind of thing? Uh, also, uh, make minor change as well as test uh, randomly 50 50 percent test simultaneously the a and the b version and the significance before testing so how significant is to make this type of test <laughs> okay you have this six best practice uh, and also remember that the important to measuring it over time, okay? Because with that you can is see, for example, uh, what a particular A/B testing work and what doesn't, and what actually just give slightly percent of the increase, uh, where whereas you have other types that vastly improve your user retention, for example. Uh, but the whole point of this is to follow is this iterative approach much like similar to the machine learning development where you have an idea then you implement that idea with data and uh, or code then you get the results these experimental results and ultimately you decide why you don't get the desired output by doing this error analysis and do that because this iterative process in the machine learning 
environment, okay, in our industry, has provided better and faster outcomes than anyone else. It's like, wow. Uh, you have to be. It is. Uh, this system is something is somewhat uh, very potent and powerful. Okay, this iterative process, iterations, iterations, iterations. And well, ultimately here is well, the section five is developing your personal brand as a freelance. So first, look at the benefits for this, which is trust and authority open to opportunity meaning that you are now able to grow your network okay and attract clients where you can now charge them more okay based on your personal branding and your interest in how dedication and iteration you have done to that process the top way to develop your personal brand okay uh, yeah, top ways to develop your personal brands. So first is embrace what sets you apart. That's one of them. And protect your brand at all costs. So be authentic and become a thought leader in that. So that was very, very interesting. A huge overview. Okay. And now I can see from a broad perspective. Okay. From the bigger picture is like okay so this is the couple step that i will do or i should do especially if i conduct a research now all of this is in theory now it's put now it's time to put that in practice okay so developing your personal brand as a consultant and here we are right so building an online presence and production content Welcome to the next lesson. Since we went over how you... Okay. Building an online presence and producing content. And there we got it. So building an online pre presence, presence in... So build an online presence and producing content. And producing content. Okay. Mm, this this. So building an online presence and producing content. Can build your personal brand and why it's so important to do so as a consultant. Now let's get into the details of building an online presence and producing content through content creation. The first step is to choose one to two platforms to focus on when you're just starting out. You can do any platform that has a large audience on it, such as Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, Blogger, whatever it is that makes the most sense for you, whatever platform you find yourself using the most, pick one to two, and that is gonna be what you're gonna focus on in the beginning. Because if you spread yourself too thin, you're not gonna be able to have the most success. It's all about focus. You must develop and protect your focus as you're building an online presence and you begin mm -hmm. producing content. This is crucial because many people focus on too many platforms all at once. But when you spread yourself too thin, it's a recipe for failure. And if you think you can just reuse the same piece of content on every single platform, that is not the best practice. So you always want to make sure that down the line, you leave opportunity for you to expand to additional platforms. However, right now, in the present moment, put all of your energy on one to two platforms first, and that will help you in the long run. So just like with performing your consulting services, it all starts with doing your research. So see what platforms that other consultants are using that are in your field and in your industry and see what platforms they're posting on and where they have the largest audiences and where there are large groups for your specific area of expertise. Then dig into the types of content that they're posting and most specifically, the type of content that's getting the most engagement and the most views. That is what you want to replicate. Now you're not going to be copying exactly what other people are doing, but you want to do your research, take notes, and then you can model after them so you can provide as much value as possible. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. So many people out there are having success as as thought leaders, as people of authority, and as consultants. And what you can do is tap into what they're doing to get a model of what you should be doing. And that's going to help you get a lot further than if you were just staring at a blank page, a blank social media profile, and not having any idea how to build that online presence and produce content. 
So always do your research in your industry and take notes on what other people are doing. After that, I have to mention this because it's so important, but it might yeah. seem like common sense, but being consistent is the key to success in building an online presence, especially when it comes to producing content. Because consistency is one of the most important, if not the most important variables to having success in actually building an online presence and developing your personal brand and not just quitting when you don't see the growth that you want to see. It's your goal, your mission, your duty to break through all of the noise out there in the marketplace because people are so distracted. They're constantly getting notifications. Their attention spans are getting lower and lower. So the only way you can break through is by being consistent and offering consistent value. There's a saying that says, if content is king, consistency is queen. So of course your content needs to be the cornerstone of your online presence. It needs to be giving value and it needs to be of high quality. However, without consistency, none of that matters. So don't put all of your time into just producing one piece of content. Make sure you're spreading your energy. You're distributing it evenly to produce consistent, valuable content. And that will help you so much as a consultant. And just because consistency is key, it doesn't mean you just want to post anything. Always think before you post anything on social media because everything should be well planned out and not just a random or unrelated post. Here's an awesome calendar that Twitter released and it's an idea for a month of tweets. You can use these content ideas to build your own online presence and produce content for your personal brand. So you can look at all of the different types of content that you can do on Twitter, for example. There's frequently asked questions. You can retweet. You can share a pro tip. You can retweet something with a comment. You can share a photo of behind the scenes pic. You can do a motivation Monday. You can share another link of content. You can post a GIF, a statistic, a meme, etc. There's so many different things, different types of content you can post. And it's your job right now to start to decide on a handful of different types of content that you would like to produce, that you think you would do the best at. So let's say you don't like going live. You can cross that out and just focus on producing videos. Or let's say you don't know exactly what type of content to produce first. Maybe you can post a survey or a poll. It's all about finding what works for you on what platform you are on, but this is a great idea of just how you can start to plan out a content okay. calendar for your content. And that's exactly what you want to do for yourself. Start to put yourself in the position of a content creator. Build a content calendar for yourself and start to plan out ahead of time what you want to post on each platform. Not only is this going to help you stay consistent, but it's also going to help you make sure you're posting different kinds of content. And in the end, it's also going to help you save time because you're going to have a content production process in place. And whenever you have a process and you, you know exactly what you need to do, you repeat a certain action place. of events, that's when you can break through all the noise and start to have success and build your online presence. Just like with everything I share, I also share different tools to help you. And it's no different with social media management tools. So one of my favorite platforms to use is okay. Buffer. Buffer helps you publish posts automatically, engage with users. And just like with everything I share, I also share different tools to help you. And it's no different with social media management tools. So one of my favorite platforms to use is Buffer. Buffer helps you publish posts automatically, engage with users, and analyze and report on results all in one platform. It works with different social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, okay. LinkedIn, and Pinterest. And now I want to show you how Buffer can help you build your online presence and produce consistent content. Social media management is complex. You are a photographer, designer, video editor, community manager, an analyst. Yet people think all you do is spend all day on social media. There has to be a better way. And there is. Buffer is a social media management platform built to streamline your workflows and showcase the value of your work. First, analyze your previous posts to see what's working. Know when to post, what to post, and how often to post. Once you're ready, plan and prepare your social media campaigns to increase your reach, engagement, and traffic. Then, so do this systematically. Need your immediate attention and never miss an important comment. Do Find this systematically. By analyzing your new posts, measure the impact of your work, and report your results so that your team understands the power of social media. Buffer helps you simplify your social media workflows all in a single platform. So that yeah, you but is this building your brand and maybe take that vacation day that you've been putting off. So now that you know why Buffer is so beneficial and how it can help you produce content, engage with users, and then also report on those results, I want to show you how easy and intuitive their dashboard is to work. So here is the content calendar. Once you're in the content calendar tab, you can either toggle between the week and the month. So for now, let's look at the week. And what I want to do is show you how you build a post in here. So let's say I want to schedule a post to go out at six. What I would do is I would click add post. And since my Pinterest account is linked right now, it wants me to choose what board I want the pin to get posted to. So I'll choose business mindset tips. And then you have the option to create the post all in the dashboard. And that's one of the best things about Buffer is that you never have to leave Buffer. You never have to go to Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn and AI get distracted system. with what other people are posting. Holy when you're working on building your brand, developing your brand and producing content, like we said, it's all about consistency. So being able to schedule everything and engage with people all in this dashboard will help you have so much more productivity. So now let me drag and drop in that content calendar from Twitter. Let's just say I wanted to share this as a great idea for people who need content ideas. Then I'll put in a title for the pin. And from there, if I wanted to, I can add a destination link. From there, you can edit the day you want it posted, also the exact time of day. So if you do want that to get posted at a specific time, let's say it's like 510, you can do so. You can click done. And once you've done that, all you have to do is just click add to queue. That's how easy it is to get something scheduled on Buffer. From there, you can see it in your week view. And if you toggle to your month view, you're not going to see it right away. But if we refresh the page, 
that will then show up exactly when that's supposed to be posted. You can hover over it and it will show you a sample of what's going to be posted. Then from there, you can toggle in between each of them, schedule more posts out if you want. And then on the month view, it's very helpful because you're going to be able to see what platform you posted on, what time of day. And that's also going to help you start to have more success and know when the best time to post is for your audience. And if you're ever wondering what's going to be posted next, you can go over here to your cues tab. It'll have your different channels here. So I'll choose my Pinterest channel and you can see that it pops open the next thing that's going to be posted. And you can either choose to delete it, edit it or share. And then you have everything else for the rest of your week here. So it's very helpful to use Buffer to do anything you need to with any of the channels that they work with. It will help you get to the next level with your content production and ultimately help you develop a very strong personal brand. I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Mm -hmm. To create content content to develop your personal brand as a consultant. Sign up for Buffer, the social media management tool mentioned in the previous lesson and link it to your top social media platform you're focused on. With the social media platform of your choice in mind, brainstorm and schedule at least one post per day for the next seven days. Try to utilize multiple post types such as video, photos, polls, and recent events, quotes, behind the scenes, and more so you can spark engagement. Now you will have the next week of posts scheduled all in a single sitting and won't need to think about it. You will ensure... Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the other is how to embrace collaboration as a consultant. With the one consulting of industry Congress. and that they share the same values that So that'll be all for this video. Take care. Bye bye.